Well, hello and welcome to Gumbo's Flying Circus, and welcome to another video uh, of the uh, P47D-30, uh, the new module for DCS World. And uh, we're going to continue looking at the training missions that come with the aircraft, um, the free missions, uh, by hitting training and uh, fixing the P47 in the uh, DCS World GUI is how you will find those. And uh, we've done the introduction and cockpit uh, look. And uh, we've done the engine startup yesterday. So uh, today we're going to do the run up check and uh, have a look at this and see what we do after the engines have warmed up. After the start, it takes about three minutes. They were saying three, four minutes for the engine to warm up properly. So it skipped that little part and moves over to the uh, run up check. So uh, let's get going and have a look and see what this is all about. We left off in the last lesson immediately after engine start, waiting for the warm-up to complete. In this lesson, we have a warm engine and are ready to perform a quick series of checks to verify everything is operating properly. This is the time to spot trouble, not while on the takeoff roll or in the air. The preferred place to do this is in chocks, with the right people around to troubleshoot any problems that are encountered, but that's not always possible due to emission timing requirements, dust, or loose items that may be blown around by the prop. So this check can be performed any time before takeoff. Press spacebar when you're ready to get started. We're going to be running the engine up, so we need to either hold the brakes or set the parking brake. To set the parking brake, pull the knob, depress and release the tow brake pedals, then release the knob. The tow brake should remain depressed. Press spacebar to continue. Now, we're going to use the throttle to set 30 inches of mercury manifold pressure and the prop lever to set 2,000 RPM for the check. So push forward to open the throttle, but do it slowly and don't let the RPM exceed 2,000 or the brakes may not hold us in place. Pull the prop lever back to keep RPM under control as you go. Once you have 30 inches of mercury and 2,000 RPM set, press spacebar to continue. Okay, let's check both magnetos. Set the ignition switch to R for the right mag, then L for the left mag while watching the engine RPM gauge. You can expect to drop about 60 RPM while running on either mag, but never more than 100. If all is well, set the switch back to both. Press spacebar to continue. Next, let's check operation of the propeller governor by exercising the prop lever. Pull the lever back until you get a drop of about 200 RPM on the gauge. Leave it in place for a moment to ensure there's no oscillation that could indicate a faulty governor. Then return RPM to 2000. Press spacebar to continue. Then, verify backup operation of the prop by placing the switch down to the fixed pitch position. Check the toggling forward increases RPM and toggling aft decreases RPM. Set the switch back up to auto when done. Press space bar to continue. Next, we'll operate the engine on each fuel tank, including the externals, if installed. Now's the time to catch a fuel feed problem, not well in the air. We have no externals installed for this lesson, but I did add some fuel to the auxiliary tank to demonstrate this check. Rotate the fuel selector from main to auxiliary. Verify the engine does not stutter or hesitate for more than a moment or two, and fuel pressure remains between 22 and 24 psi. Set the selector back to main when done. Press spacebar to continue. Then, check for a charge on the ammeter on the main instrument panel. This indicates the generator is operating. 
If no charge is indicated, verify the RPM is set above the 1100 or so required to operate the generator. If there's still no charge indicated, there is a problem and you should abort the aircraft. Now, if the charge is simply low, it means that the battery is fully charged and hoping to pick up the electrical load. Press spacebar to continue. We'll want to verify the engine instruments are still normal with this increased RPM. So check for an oil pressure between 75 and 85 PSI, oil temperature about 50 degrees, cylinder head temperature between 100 and 260, fuel pressure 22 to 24 PSI, and hydraulic pressure 800 to 1100 PSI. Most gauges are marked with a green band to indicate the normal range. Once those are checked, let's pull the throttle back to get an RPM of about 900. You should also push the prop lever back to its full forward position. Engine RPM on the ground and during taxi will usually be below the 1100 required to run the generator, so you'll be using up the battery power. You'll want to minimize the time on the ground or run the engine up periodically to run the generator and to refresh the charge. Press spacebar to continue. Well, that completes the run-up check, but there are still some tiny cleanup tasks to perform to get ready for taxi. So let's uncage and set the horizon gyro. Right-click the knob to uncage the gyro, then rotate the other knob to set it. We're sitting nose high on the ground, so a proper setting will have the horizon line below the wings. The gyro can easily lose alignment in flight if you maneuver in a way that it can't cope with. So to deal with that, maneuver wings level, Cage and uncage the gyro and reset the horizon bar. Press space bar to continue. The directional gyro should have had time to calibrate by now and is probably already set to show our true heading. You can compare this to a known heading on the ground or to the magnetic compass in the center of the instrument panel. The knob can be used to reset the direction any time if it goes out of alignment. You'll likely need to do this periodically during flight. Press space bar to continue. Then last, let's turn on the radio by pushing the button for the channel we want to transmit and receive on. This can be A, B, C, or D depending on how the mission is set up. The details, if communication is required at all, will be listed in your mission briefing. This is usually delayed as long as possible to preserve the battery, but it can be done at any time if communications are required earlier in the mission. So at this point, we're ready to taxi to the runway and take off. Press spacebar to continue. So far, we've seen all the major systems at work except armament, and it's time to fly the aircraft. Believe me, you'll be glad these building blocks are in place and you are not trying to figure all this out and fly at the same time. We'll come back in the next lesson, ready to taxi to the runway and take off, so feel free to continue exploring the aircraft on your own or press escape to end this lesson at any time. Okay, so that wasn't too uh, bad. That was nice and uh, simple for the uh, run-up checks on the engine, checking all the pressures and things like that. That's good to know. Also, how to uncage and set the uh, compass there. So, uh, yeah, a few little things on, on this one, uh, just to uh, check over the aircraft, make sure there's no problems or trouble. Um, our job as a pilot, obviously, is to look for uh, problems. And... Uh, Always assume the aircraft's trying to kill us. So uh, keep checking, checking, check again. So anyway, that was the run-up check. Um, then we're going to do the next one, which is the taxi and takeoff. And uh, hopefully you'll join me for that one. And uh, we'll see uh, see how we get on. Uh, so thanks for all that's coming to watch. Uh, take care of yourselves. Enjoy your DCS. And I'll see you again soon. ta -ra. Thank you for watching another Gumbo's Flying Circus live stream. Don't forget to join the Discord channel. Like, share, follow and subscribe for regular updates, chat, 
screenshots and more. Your kind support is always greatly appreciated. See you next time for another Gumbo's Flying Circus live stream.